Greetings, I'm Shad, and there is a video on my channel entitled The Problem with Hina. And the problem I talk about is the pet peeve I have that uh, I had come across many HEMA practitioners uh, do. If you're wondering what that is, please go watch my video. Now I say in that video that my problem isn't representative of HEMA as a whole, and in that video I say that I love HEMA and I want to do it, and indeed that's what I consider that I am practicing in regards to my swordsmanship today. I'm practicing HEMA. Uh, and I don't explain why I love HEMA as much as I do. And so that's what this video is. I want to explain to you why I think HEMA is probably, at the moment, the very best source that you can go to to try and learn functional, effective swordsmanship. And this is in comparison to other, you know, swordsmanship kind of things, like kendo, like fencing, like kenjutsu. Kenjutsu. Segway, let me just say, HEMA isn't just swordsmanship, okay? HEMA is any European martial arts. In the whole context of this video, I'm applying it in the context of learning how to fight with a sword, specifically long sword. Now, there are other kind of avenues that you can go to to try and learn swordsmanship or, or swordsman-like practice, such as fencing or kendo or kenjutsu. Ken kenjutsu. I meant, I meant to say kenjutsu, okay? All right. Now, out of these other kind of uh, avenues you could do to try and learn swordsmanship, HEMA, in my opinion, is by far the best. And I'm going to say something controversial here. Okay, People probably, especially those who uh, are, uh, you know, uh, involved and love uh, uh, Japanese swordsmanship, like uh, Kenjutsu. I actually think you could learn how to fight with a Japanese sword, katana, tashi, whatever to a greater level of effectiveness by learning it through HEMA. The thing is, a lot of this, especially the stances, there's a lot of similarities between uh, uh, traditional HEMA sources that teach swordsmanship and uh, Japanese sources. The main differences you will find are focuses on the types of cuts, like draw cuts and other things like that, and also attacks with the back edge. The thing that I feel offsets that, because honestly, what I just said uh, would be a disadvantage in trying to learn how to fight with a katana through HEMA, the thing that I actually feel offsets this is the huge focus that HEMA has on sparring, practical application of techniques. So often people practice techniques against a static opponent or a yielding opponent that, that is letting you succeed in the technique you're trying. That isn't the way to learn how to pull off a technique or to learn if even a technique is effective or viable in an actual sword fight. No, you need to practice that against an opponent who is actively trying to stop you, okay, from executing that technique or move. Now, if there are schools of Kenjutsu that have a, as equal a focus on sparring and practical applications of techniques, I retract what I just said happily. But if not, learning how to actually fight with a sword against a po and an opponent who is trying to beat you and fight you is the best way to be become better as a swordsman. You need foundation of techniques, don't get me wrong there, but in perfecting those techniques and learning how to execute them in a high stress environment in a competitive match, you need to have aggressive sparring. And so much of HEMA is all about aggressive sparring. I love it. I have found in uh, being an effective swordsman, okay, fighting other people, swords, trying to, in a match, trying to win, there's some very technical things that are involved in it that does take a lot of time to figure them all out. I'm not there, I'm still figuring everything out. But having said that, there is also some very strong common fundamentals that nearly every swordsman uses and doesn't stray too much from these fundamental things. Knowing distance and timing, how to throw a good strike, where to hold the sword to get, you know, the best defense and number of things, okay? And the thing that makes someone an effective swordsman, okay, is knowing those fundamentals really well and using them really well. Not knowing thousands of different types of moves that they can resort to in a unique kind of position that they're in, because oftentimes a fundamental technique, a basic technique, could work just as effectively as an exotic fancy technique and therefore someone who practices these fundamentals can actually compete really well against someone who is really experienced in knowing a broad range of different moves and stuff like that because it's the fundamentals in swordsmanship that actually have a larger impact in determining if you're going to be effective in fighting with a sword. It's funny, I remember a quote from Bruce Lee and I'm paraphrasing so I don't think it's going to be word for word perfect. But he said basically this, I don't fear the man who has practiced a hundred different kicks. 
I fear the man who has practiced the one kick a hundred times. I'm explaining this to emphasize the importance I feel exists in the need to have active aggressive sparring, okay, in learning swordsmanship. It's through that that you really get to be able to perfect and refine these fundamentals. The other thing that makes Hema phenomenal in learning how to be a better swordsman is that they don't have illegal target areas, okay? The whole body is a target. You get a good hit on the body, it counts, which is awesome, because that's what it would be in a real fight. I remember I was having a sparring session against a kendo practitioner, okay? And I kept hitting him in the legs. Their excuse was that, oh, well, hitting the legs isn't a legal target, so, I, you know, I just haven't practiced blocking there. And I'm like, well, yeah, that, that, that is the reason, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try and block the hits I'm getting on your legs. If this is a real sword fight, you'd be trashed. And because we weren't sparring in an official kendo kind of match, of course those hits were being counted, as they should be. Head, hands, throat, legs, foot, bum, balls, all right? If it hits the body with the blade, okay, that will count. Well, having said that, if you're uh, considering armed combat, of course, it makes obvious logical sense to discount hits that would have landed on armoured parts of the body. Yeah, but any sword fighting system that has, you know, legal target areas and any hit that is outside of those areas is uh, discounted, is that, that turns swords pl sword play into a sport, not a martial art. The other reason why Hema is just awesome and one of the very best sources you can turn to for learning how to sword fight, making it in my opinion better than everything else, Kenjutsu included, is grappling. Okay, from my observations, uh, from what I've seen in Kinshatsu, yeah? and granted, it, my observations are not extensive, okay, so if anyone points out that, that there is grappling in Kinshatsu to the level that exists in Hema, I'm happy to be wrong about this. From what I've seen, no, there isn't, okay. With Hema, it allows grabbing the blade, grabbing your opponent and trips. In fact, I even see that, you know, tournaments and matches allow, you know, the swords being thrown aside to get into a full wrestling match, which is brilliant. That is real, okay? And also, just the concept of hitting aside opponent's blade or even blocking, okay, with your arm sometimes. So if you could deflect or block, you know, a strike with your arm and run your opponent through or get a really solid strike as a response, you get a big cut on your arm. It's not a good thing, this isn't a perfect situation, okay? But in the trade of injuring your hand and killing your opponent and saving your life, that's, you know, a good enough trade. So in many HEMA kind of schools, because there's different schools of swordsmanship in HEMA as well, but they allow slapping aside opponent's blade with your hand, and uh, they will even gauge, like, uh, because they'll have points based on what was a more lethal blow and then what wasn't. It's brilliant! It's awesome! I remember in my early days of sword, practicing sword fighting, right? Um, and uh, I tried to go to any source that I could learn sword fighting. So I'd look at kendo, I'd look at it. I'd never really tried fencing much because obvious reasons. But a lot of it initially was, you know, uh, personal experimentation. And I came across a guy that did kendo. And so we happily tried, to, you know, we sparred. We didn't try, we, we did spar. And there was a lot of fun and everything like that. And uh, we're sitting there just like, why not? So we got our stance, and I grabbed his blade with my left hand and hit him. And he's like, well, hang on, you can't do that. Uh, and I'm thinking, why not? And I never saw this in the treatise or anything because it just made sense in that moment. And I was like, why not? I've got a cut hand, you're dead. It's a good trade. It had never entered into his mind that such a thing was even possible because it was so illegal in the context of where he was learning how to sword fight. Yeah, I mean, I think back and it really was funny how foreign and a concept that was, grabbing your opponent's blade with your hand. And so, in my opinion, any sword fighting martial art which disallows grapples and things like that, big limitation in its effectiveness in you learning to be the best swordsman you can be. But this is why HEMA, in learning to be the best swordsman you can be, is awesome. This is why I love HEMA, this is why I constantly go to HEMA like videos made by HEMA practitioners, instructors and schools to learn how to be better at sword fighting. If you are interested in seeing me actually fight with a sword, you know, put into practice some of the techniques that I try and learn and I also the things I talk about on this, you know, YouTube channel, please go watch some of these videos here. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and until next time, farewell.